welcome to People in Power. I'm Barbara Serra. On today's program, Israel's judicial apartheid. In 1948, Israel's founding fathers issued a manifesto declaring, among other things, that the new state would uphold the equality of all its citizens without distinction of race or creed. Well, six decades later, it's not a principle that many of Israel's Arab citizens, who make up about 20% of the population, believe applies to them, and especially not in matters involving law and order. This concern is highlighted by a case soon to come in front of an Israeli court. Twelve Arabs are charged with offences related to the killing of an off-duty Jewish soldier in 2005. But the soldier, Eden Natanzada, had himself just shot and killed four Arab passengers on board a bus while wounding 12 others. Tony Stark has been investigating the disturbing background to the case and whether Israeli Arabs are regularly the victims of legal double standards. On August the 4th, 2005, a Jewish soldier in the Israeli army boarded a bus on its way to the northern Arab town of Shafama. It was just two weeks before Israel withdrew from Gaza, and Eden Natan Zada strongly opposed the plan. He was just 19. As the bus entered the town, he began shooting passengers with his M16 rifle. واهل لما لما كنت اطلع من شباك الباص لبرا وفجاه سمعت صوت طخ طلعت لقيت واحد عم بطخ بالشوفير نزلت تحت الكراسي بعدني بنزل تحت الكراسي والطخ يعني مكمل يعني ما وقفش ما نزلت تحت الكراسي ونمت على بطني ولا اصبع بني ادم طب قدامي على الارض في نفس اللحظه هاي انا اتاكدت انه هذا الشيء يعني جاي بس يقتل الناس during a pause in the shooting, Ha'el Al Janhawi bravely decided to try and prevent further bloodshed. يعني لما أنا أميت كان في معه مجال إنه تخني بس من أجل يعني الحمد لله ربنا كتب لنا عبر جديد كان السلاح مركب معه. فضليت نتدافش أنا وياه طول تاني نيمت على الكراسي وراء كراكورستين ورنيات قبل الأخير يعني إنه عاد قبل الأخير لما وصلت أو لما وصلت لوضع إنه هو نام على ظهره وأنا كنت فوقه ما وتبت السلاح على صدره وهاي إيدي الشمال اللي نحرقه طول طول ضرعنا فيها شيء. Ha'el Al Jan Howie pulled the gun away from the soldier and got off the bus. He was so disturbed by what he'd seen that he passed out. By then, four people, including the bus driver, had been killed, 12 others wounded. As news of the shooting spread, an angry crowd gathered. Nathan Zada was still on the bus, now being held by several police officers. Exactly what happened next is unclear, but things got out of hand. <laughs> الناس عضاد لأنه الناس تحت بتصيح وبدأ تطلع على الباص بدأ تحاول تقلب الباص أساس مش عارفين شو المخرب أو القاتل شو أعدام العيش ولا مية ولا واحد كان يعرف الوضع. People stormed onto the bus. Nathan Zada was attacked. He was killed. Seven local men are now being tried for his attempted murder. 
a further five for lesser offences. The decision to charge anyone caught up in the events of that terrible day has hit a very raw nerve among Arab Israelis. In the middle of the town, there's now a memorial to the four who were murdered by Nathan Zada. Sadness at the waste of life is now mingled with anger at the prosecutions. وصل إنه في بني آدم أوس على ناس يعني فيش إله اسم فيش هوية فيش إشي في واحد تعدى على بلدك تعدى على ناسك هو قرار عنصري من الدرجة الأولى يعني واضح إنه إنه القضاء الإسرائيلي أو الأمن الإسرائيلي أو الشرطة الإسرائيلية يعني ب بتكيل بمكيالين لما بتكون القضية تتعلق بين عربي لا يهودي أو يهودي عربي يعني Concern about the decision to prosecute the 12 men has even prompted one Jewish minister in the government to break ranks and speak out in protest. Do you think it's right to prosecute 12 men for involvement in the killing of Nathan Zada? Tell you, though I'm in the government and law is a law, I have difficulties with that because I think it's somehow asymmetrical because I really believe that these people essentially that uh, there was such an outrage that basically there was a, ter a terrorist, a Jewish terrorist that uh, creates such a havoc. Uh, so you have to approach it with a different sign of sense. Of course, in every place, in each country, you not allow lynching. And you know, of course, it's illegal. But given the circumstances, uh, I would expect that uh, these things would be different uh, given the, as I say, the terrorist aspect of this terrible Jew. The court case has also brought into the open a simmering distrust of the forces of law and order among Israel's one and a half million Arab citizens. Noisy protests have been held outside the court in Haifa, where the trial is taking place. The claim is that Jews who kill Arabs in Israel are treated in a very different way to the Arabs now being prosecuted for killing Nathan Zada. It's a view held by some of the most senior members of the Arab community. In Tel Aviv, in uh, Kiryat Shmone, in uh, West Jerusalem, Jewish uh, citizens who shot Palestinians who also were isolated and arrested, and they were considered heroes by Israelis. Are you saying that the law is not being applied equally between Israeli Arabs and Jews? Definitely. There is a double standard and discrimination in, the, in applying the, the law towards Jews and Arabs. Definitely, yes, sir. To find out what's behind this feeling, we visited Jafar Farah, a lawyer who runs a human rights group in Haifa. He's been investigating incidents in which Jews kill Arabs. Farah says there have been 44 such killings since the year 2000 that raise very worrying questions. The case of Imad Hamdoun, for example, he was killed in 2002. He was in his bicycle. A Jewish civilian was shooting on the bicycle. He died. Uh, the family was uh, compensated by the police, but no conviction against the Jewish civilian that uh, shot the bicycle. In the case of Nadim Milham, uh, Nadim Elham was shooted in his house, actually, by police officer. Police unit came to make investigation and to arrest him. It ended in shooting him and killing him. He died. Also, in this case, uh, uh, the police haven't been found guilty and was released. In the 44 cases, we know for sure that the victims haven't been involved in violence against state authorities or against Jewish civilians. And when they were killed, they weren't they didn't have weapons, they weren't shooting. No, all of them haven't been uh, carrying any weapon and uh, it was proved, at least in our eyes, that most of them were victims of violence. Israeli law is meant to apply to everyone equally, but Farah is particularly critical of the way police investigate cases where Jews kill Arab citizens in Israel. Most cases didn't reach even to the court. Most cases have been dismissed in lower levels, either by police units that didn't uh, 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 investigate the cases in a proper way, later on by the general attorney that uh, 
on the basis of course of the evidences ha that have been collected in the field, they said that we couldn't submit the case to the, to the court. The result that only we have two cases of conviction after years of struggle and after years of raising the, the, the issue again and again with all state authorities. So it's the whole system is not functioning when the victim is an Arab victim. One of the cases investigated by Mossawa is that of Sabri Jajawi, a 26-year-old gardener who died in 2008 in the southern city of Ashkelon. He'd been in a car park near the beach, sitting in a vehicle with a friend. Two undercover police came to them and uh, asked them to show some ID. And uh, the policeman uh, said that we don't want Arab here. What Arab doing here in Ashkelon? اسماعيل خلوه عند سيارة الشرطة عند عجل سيارة الشرطة موجود وصبري أخذوه في بالضبط هين يعني ظلوا يضربوا فيه لحد ما كان مستلقى على الأرض يعني ما كان بيقدر يقاوم اثنين منهم وهم شرطة بدوا يستعملوا فيه معهم ال الأضواء هذول اللي بيستعملها الشرطة الأضواء قال كبار بيستعملها الشرطة مصابيح هال مصابيح المعدنية مصابيح المعدنية بدوا يستعملوهن ويضربوا فيه على راسه يعني كل الضرب كان على راسه في لحظة معينة هو فقد الوعي يعني وبطل يتحرك حسب أقوال إسماعيل إنه رجل الشرطة اللي قتله قفز في الهواء يعني وخبط بجري على صدره بعد ما كان فاقد الوعي يعني Sabri Jajawi was taken to hospital. He was in a coma for three months before dying from his injuries. Masawa says the police investigation of the incident concluded that his injuries had resulted from a fall, not a beating. The case was closed without a prosecution. The family decided to obtain an independent autopsy. <laughs> كان بتكون الإصابة في مكان واحد الإصابة كانت في سائر أنحاء الجسم يعني خصوصا في الرأس وفي الصدر كان عنده كسور في الرأس أكثر من ثلاثة كسور في الرأس وأكثر من كسرين في الصدر وهذا بدل إنه هذا مش وقع يعني. The Israeli police declined to be interviewed in this program. Their spokesman told us they did not wish to comment on any of the allegations made by Mossawa. شعور يعني ما ما بنقدر نوصف الشعور تبعنا لما اثنين زي هذول حتى ما ما طلعوهم من شغلهم يوم واحد صبري كان متجوز عنده بنت صغيرة وكان إنسان عادي زي باقي الناس يعني ما كان بعمل مشاكل. And would you say this has affected your confidence in the law and policing in Israel? طبعا اليوم ما ظل عندنا أي ثقة في جهاز الشرطة. Some Israeli Jews working inside the legal system echo those worries. Michael Svard is a lawyer who acts for a number of Israeli and Palestinian human rights organizations. I think institutional racism is evolving uh, in my country, and I'm embarrassed and, um, and uh, very sad to say that. The Israeli police, the Israeli investigators, they're all extremely professional and extremely motivated when it comes to catching Palestinians. They are much less motivated, much less um, uh, rigorous when it has to do with uh, uh, Jews that operate on ideological ground and their victims are Palestinians. The danger is that the more discrimination will infiltrate our system the less our system will be legitimate in the eyes of the people. That's where we're heading. In the middle of such a bitter and long conflict, with such polarized attitudes between the Jewish and Arab communities, it's easy to see how discrimination and injustice can arise. It's a problem that the Israeli government says it recognizes and is working to eradicate. I accept that the state of Israel did not treat the Israeli Arabs as they should have been treated. They want to be part of the Jewish state, but with full 
democracy as they deserve. But do you think that Arab Israelis can have fair treatment under the law and in policing uh, before the conflict is settled? I think yes. I think it yes. I think it's difficult, but I believe that in spite of the tension that exists, we should pursue justice. The law should treat everybody equally. And when it's not, it should be corrected. Just how far away Israel's Arab citizens still are from receiving equal treatment is shown, some Arabs believe, by the police examination of Nathan Zada's violent attack. The police investigated the soldier and say he was a lone gunman who acted without help. That's not the view of Maha Talami, a lawyer representing one of those charged with taking part in his killing. He's conducted his own investigation into Nathan Zada with the help of a former Israeli Secret Service agent. It's taken two years. And he's convinced the police overlooked evidence indicating that the attack was a pre-planned conspiracy. The police investigation was reckless. Uh, they didn't investigate this case seriously. They just wanted to close this file immediately because it kind of embarrassed the state of Israel because having a soldier who is a terrorist is really embarrassing for the country. Talami says the evidence the police failed to find begins in a bus station in Haifa where Nathan Zada boarded the bus to Shafama. Just two weeks before his attack, he was spotted there acting suspiciously. He was seen by security guards in the central bus station and he was in his army uniform and he had his gun with him and he was looking around in the area where Arabs uh, get the buses to go to the villages and towns. So that made the security guard really suspicious because he had no reason to be there. The guard spoke with Nathan Zada and later recognized him when his picture was published in the press. There was more evidence of pre-planning. Talami says he discovered that Nathan Zada had traveled into Shafama on the same bus the day before his attack. He was asleep when it reached the final stop. The bus driver, he asked him, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I fell asleep. So he gave him some water. The next day, he got in the same bus, in the same line, at the same time and he shot first the bus driver in the head and then he started shooting at all of the passengers. So the same person who'd helped him the day before? He, yeah. Talami also says there's evidence that Nathan Zada had help in planning his attack. Three eyewitnesses, at least, saw a suspicious car uh, during the time of the attack in Shfama. It had three people in it who described them as religious uh, Jewish people, and they had the uh, orange ribbon on the car. Now, this ribbon used to represent the struggle, struggle of the settlers against uh, this engagement. In so, Gaza? In Gaza. The car was waiting, and when they saw a police car coming, they just uh, swiftly raced out of the town. Was this at the same time as the attack? It was about the same time. According to Talami, the strongest evidence that Nathan Zada did not act alone was found in his mobile phone records. The lawyer tracked down who he was speaking to on the day before his attack in Shafama. We found out that we're talking about really dangerous criminals. They're all Jews from settlements that some of them got indicted before for doing a terrorist act. So what was said in this conversation, we don't know, but he didn't call, for example, his family or friends. He called people from Tapua, which is a really extreme settlement in the West Bank. And a Jewish settlement. A Jewish settlement. The settlement lies on a hilltop in the occupied West Bank. It's called Kafar Tapua and is home to 150 Jewish families. It's also widely reported to be the home of many supporters of Meir Kahane, a controversial rabbi who wanted to expel Arabs from Israel. He was assassinated in 1990. Four years later, a Kahane supporter called Baruch Goldstein opened fire on worshippers in a mosque in Hebron. Scores of Arabs were killed and wounded. 
After this, Kahani's political party, Kach, was banned as a terrorist organization. Nathan Zada, pictured here carrying a book by Rabbi Kahane, was a member of the illegal Kach party. He also lived as a guest in Kafar Tupua for several months before the attack. Moshe Meyersdorf is one of the leaders of the settlement. A lawyer says he's found uh, strong circumstantial connections between Nathan Zada and people with terrorist convictions living in this settlement. What's your response to that claim? אני לא חושב שיש פה פעילי טרור, או הגדרות של טרור הן מאוד תלוי מאיפה אתה מסתכל. אני אומר, בגדול, אני לא מכיר פה פעילויות טרור או דברים כאלה, הילדים שלי לומדים בגן. אני חושב שאם הוא מצא משהו שהוא חושב שהוא מחייב חקירה, או מחייב העמדה לדין, אדרבה, שיגיש למשטרה. זה מה שעושה אדם נורמלי, לא... אדם נורמלי לא עושה חקירה והולך ל... ל-BBC, אדם נורמלי, הוא עושה חקירה והולך למשטרה וטוען את הטענות שלו, והמשטרה מחליטה אם זה באמת אמיתי או לא אמיתי. מהאט אלאמי is calling for the police to reopen their investigation into Nathan Zada. The police told us they can't make any comment on the lawyer's claims until the end of the court case against the 12 charged in connection with the soldier's death. Among those Arabs now openly criticizing the policing of their community in Israel is Umay Zat Adil Turk. She lost her two teenage daughters, Hazar and Dina, in Nathan Zada's violent attack. She's kept their room exactly as it was when they died four years ago. <laughs> The pain of Adil Turk's loss is made so much worse by her feeling that justice is not being done in Israel. One in five Israeli citizens are Arabs. If a growing number of them continue to feel alienated from the forces of law and order, the legitimacy of the country's democracy will eventually be undermined. We think that the Jewish community have to share responsibility. We need to see the president of the state of Israel and the leaders and the leaders of police forces, all of them standing as one voice and say, we will not allow ongoing violence against the Arab citizens. You have to know that everybody will be equal in front of the law, and if people will be criminals, and they are Jews or Arabs, they will face the same treatment in front of the law. Well, that's it for this edition of People in Power. If you'd like to comment on this report or any other matter, We'd love to hear from you. Do get in touch on aljazeera.net forward slash English. Until next time, goodbye.